All right, in this video, I'm going to be repairing this 13 inch 2008 Unibody MacBook logic board. Um, now, this board is actually not my board. This was actually sent to me by somebody uh, and they wanted me to repair it. Uh, it was sent to me by, uh, I think it was Alatech12 on Twitter. I don't think he has a YouTube channel, but uh, anyway, he sent me this board. And uh, basically, the issues that this board has. Uh, it actually does turn on and work. It, that part is fully functional. But uh, the issue with it is that uh, it will not produce a backlight on an LCD panel. And uh, I believe one of the USB ports doesn't work. So in this video, uh, I'm going to be repairing both of those problems, hopefully. And uh, yeah, so this is just going to be a video overview of that repair. So as you can see right now, I've got uh, the board hooked up to a really crappy LCD panel. And you can see it's cracked. And it is extremely dirty. This is just a really old panel I've had laying around. I don't actually have uh, a chassis for this machine, so uh, this is how I'm going to have to test the board. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually let me go ahead and uh, put the camera up here in my little makeshift tripod. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn it, plug in the board and uh, turn it on and uh, show you what it does. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug it in here. You can see that when we plug it in, um, we do get a green light on the charger. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, we do get a green light on the charger. There you go, you can see it now. And uh, so now we're just going to go ahead and turn the board on using the power pads. Alright, so right now you can see that the board is now on. You can see the fan is spinning. And uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but since there's no backlight, uh, you really can't see anything, but uh, the screen is actually on. I have verified this beforehand, and uh, it will show a flashing question mark. So the board itself is working perfectly fine. Uh, it's just the backlight circuit uh, that is not working. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is just go ahead and take a look at the schematic, uh, trace that circuit, and try to figure out what is causing the backlight not to work. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the schematic out, and we will begin the debugging process. So I'll be right back. Alright, so you can see here that I have the uh, schematic open here. Now, the first thing we're going to do, of course, is just check this fuse. And uh, if that's bad, then that's probably all the issue is. Uh, but uh, if that's not, if that, that if the fuse is good, uh, then we're just going to go ahead and plug the board in and check for the voltage, which should be about 12.6 volts. And uh, if we're getting that at this point, so R9808, if we're getting it on pin 1 of R9808 or pin 2 of the fuse, then that means something uh, within this circuit is not functioning correctly. So um, that could be either the backlight on signal or, yeah, or it's just not getting the power. I hope it's just not getting the power because that should be the easiest fix. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put my camera back on the tripod here. And uh, we're going to go through and test all of these uh, points on the board and make sure we're getting the voltages. And if not, we'll figure out what to do from there. All right, so hopefully you're able to see everything okay. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to go ahead and plug in the board. And uh, we'll go ahead and get it turned on here. There we go. Um, so let me go ahead and flip it up here so I can turn it on. All right, there we go. So now, let's just go ahead and check for voltages. So, um, first off, let me check at that fuse. So F9800, um, let's turn this to DC volts. Um, let's see, where's F9800 here? See, it's right here. And we are indeed getting the correct voltage on that pin. So that's good. Um, so now let's see what else is going on here. Let's check. Sorry, this is going to be kind of a hard video to make because I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it yet. 
Um, so what I might do is I might just pause the video and do some of the debugging on my own and then just go over uh, what actually went wrong with the board. So that's probably what I'm going to do just because it's easier for me. This is kind of kind of difficult to take a video on doing this and make it, you know, good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast. And uh, once I finish that, I will resume the video. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so after some brief testing, I think I figured out what is actually wrong with this board. So, I tested the voltage uh, to the backlight on the LVDS connection, and it is getting 12 volts. Now, I thought originally I thought that was fine until I looked at the schematic and noticed that it's supposed to have, uh, let me show you, where is it? It's supposed to have 30 volts going into the LCD, and that means that this entire circuit right here, this chip, uh, which is supposed to control the voltage and increase the voltage to 30 volts on that rail, is not working at all. And what I found is there is no connection between this pin on this capacitor to this pin on this resistor. There is 12 volts here, but there's no voltage at all whatsoever right here. And I tested this resistor and it indeed measures 100 ohms as it shows in the schematic. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to solder a jumper wire from pin 1 on this capacitor to pin 2 on this resistor. And that should, in theory, get us this rail right here. And uh, hopefully, once that's done, the backlight will begin to start functioning. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on the tripod and begin soldering that jumper wire on. So, I will be right back. Alright, so we're all ready now to begin the soldering process. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is get out my iron here. And uh, it's already on, so it's heating up right now. Uh, and then we're going to just go ahead and tin up the end of this jumper wire here. I hope you can see that. Yeah, this is just a piece of LVDS wire. Um, this stuff actually works really well for doing little jumpers like this. Um, so let's start by just putting a little bit of solder on the end of my iron here. Just like that. Then we'll go ahead and tin up the end of this. Just like that. You can see that. Yeah, so there we go. Just tinned up the end of that. Um, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and um, put some flux on the board on the uh, area I need to let me just make sure I'm getting this right. Alright, so I was just making sure I was getting the right pin. But uh, now what we're going to do is go ahead and put some flux on the area where we're going to be soldering to, which is right on pin one of that capacitor right here. So now what we're going to do is just go ahead and add a tiny bit of solder to that. Make sure you can see that still. Good. Yeah, okay. So now we're just going to add a small bit of solder right here. And uh, that should do it. And now, it's going to take the end of our jumper wire. And let me solder it on the right way here. Go ahead and uh, solder it in. All right, there we go, now it's on. So now all we've got to do is solder the other end of the wire to the other component, which is on the other side of the board. So the component we need to solder this to is a resistor that is right, here, let me point to it with something so you can see it. We're going to be soldering it to a resistor, which is right there. That resistor right here, which is very small. 
And just to make sure I'm getting the right pin here, it needs to be pin 2. So that's the bottom pin. So let me go ahead and get some solder on the end of this piece of wire, or this side of it. I'm going to cut it a little bit. It's very okay. That should be good. So let's take some solder here. Alright, the wire's tinned up. So now we just gotta find that resistor, which is very small, and just solder it to it. Might need a small bit of force on that actually. And there we go, the wire is now in. All right, so now that we've gotten that soldered on, I'm gonna go ahead and put the screen on and plug it in and we will see if the machine actually shows a backlight. So I'll be right back. All right, so as you can see, the board is now plugged in and is turned on and check it out. Look at that backlight. So that was the problem. Uh, there was a broken choice between those two components, uh, C9701 and R701, or R9701. So, uh, like I said, like I just showed you, I just soldered a jumper wire from that capacitor on that side of the board to the little tiny resistor on this side of the board. And uh, the backlight, as you can see, is fully functional. You can see that we now have a flashing question mark, and now the machine is working perfectly. Now, I haven't tested that USB port like I mentioned in the first part of the video, uh, so I might go ahead and do that now. I'm not sure if I'm going to repair that in this video or not. But uh, the most important part, the backlight, uh, is now complete, and the backlight, as you can see, is fully functional now. So uh, that has been the repair of this, uh, I guess, late 2008 13-inch aluminum unibody MacBook. Hope you enjoyed this video.